Okay, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I do Botox. Obviously, every client is different, every wrinkle is different, so you can't treat every person the same. I have a lot of people who come who've, who are absolutely petrified of the Spock brow. Not surprised, it does happen, and I'm going to tell people why it happens. Obviously, I can't discuss units and stuff because I don't want anyone to take what I say as teaching. It's more to make people aware of why we do what we do. Okay, so this is Elliot and he's nicely volunteered. So if Elliot raises his eyebrows, okay. So as you can see, Elliot's lines go from all the way from one side, all the way across to the other. Whereas some people might only have it in the middle, he does have it all the way across. So we have to be quite mindful that when we do his Botox, we have to treat this area as well. We don't just block treat this area, which a lot of people do do. A lot of training places just teach this. The reason they do this is because they're worried about drooping of the brow, but I'll let you know why that happens. What I'm gonna show you here, so if Elliot kindly raises his brow again, okay, and relax. So what we have here is two big muscles, the this and this one, and these are called the frontalis muscles. And then in the lower part of the face, we have your corrugators, so here and here, and we have your procerus, which is just here. So what the lower part of the face does, these muscles do, is they push the, the muscles downwards like that, okay? So when you treat with Botox, it actually paralyzes this area. And in essence, what it does, it stops it pulling down so much and actually raises it just a little bit, obviously depending where you inject. And then by injecting your frontalis muscles, so this bit over here and this bit over here, it stops you raising raising your eyebrows so much and moving the forehead muscle so much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mark out the area so we can have a quick look. So Elliot, if you could frown for me. Okay, so you can see there's quite a bit of movement there. So a lot of injectors do do this bit. I haven't seen much difference between injectors doing this. Frown again for me. Okay. And he's a quite, his um, corrugators are actually quite strong. So you have to alter your dose depending on the person that you're treating. Okay, and then raise your eyebrows for me. So remember what I said, so his wrinkles, his lines go all the way across. What happens if I just treat this area, so if I just treat here and I just do four little dots here, what, I'm, what we'll find is this freezes, but this still moves, and that is why you get the spot look. So Elliot, if you raise your eyebrow, so that is what we will get, and that is called the spock brow. So relax for me. But if I freeze here, and I also freeze a little bit here as well, if he raises his brow, it won't, if I've frozen this as, as well, it won't let this bit raise as much like that. So that's why you won't get the sp spot brow. So you, whatever you do here, you have to counteract it here as well. Some people are worried because if you inject past this point, you have a higher risk of drooping this brow like this. But again, it's due to anatomy. This isn't for the injectors to learn from. This is just to build awareness for our patients because a lot of them come and say they've got, they've had Botox, they've got the heavy feeling, they've had the Spock brow. I'm just doing this to tell them that the things that they have had happen to them isn't actually normal. So you just have to know why stuff is happening, which is what we're gonna go through. So Elliot, if you raise your muscles again, your Okay, and relax for me. So as I said, we're gonna treat over here because he has got quite strong muscles all the way across. Okay. And raise again for me. Okay, and relax. And raise, and relax. And raise, and relax, okay. Okay, raise. So as you can see, Elliot's muscles come all the way to the top. So sometimes it is beneficial because what would happen is I'd freeze all of this and then I've left this part here. So you can actually put two little ones up here, but not everyone needs it because some people's muscles do not come all the way up to the hairline. You just got to be wary of what you're getting done. Okay, sharp scratch, well done. How's that? It's fine. So we're trying to get these corrugators done and we hold the area because we don't want, where we're injecting, we don't want it to go below the brow. That's what we don't want to happen. So we just hold on for a little while just to make sure that the product stays where we want it to. Okay. 
So this one's a bit more superficial and again it's due to the anatomy and where the muscle actually lies. It's not as deep as the first lot that we did. Okay, so these little lumps that we can see, this is where the product is. This is because this will actually then go into your muscles. So don't worry that there are lumps straight after Botox, they will dissipate and go away very soon actually. Right, so face me a little bit. Okay, so we've got the one, so hopefully where we've injected that will counteract up here so we won't get the spot brown. We've had to come all the way across. Obviously people are worried about drooping, but if you know where to inject and how low not to go, you shouldn't get drooping of the brow. And again, same again, we don't want the spot brow, so we're coming all the way across. And injecting right there. And as I said, Elliot's muscles go all the way to his hairline. So Elliot, raise your brows again. If you can see, that is what we're missing. So we're just gonna go just by the hairline again. Okay, well done. Raise your brows again. Okay, and relax. These are the crow's feet, so we can treat these as well. Um, again, with the lower part of the face, what happens is they all pull down. So even the crow's feet, this all pulls down. So once this is treated, this is how people get brow lift as well. Obviously, I won't do this for Elliot because we don't want him to have a brow like that. It's quite feminine, so we avoid that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and just catch this area here. Okay. Okay. Obviously his crow's feet aren't huge, so you don't need to overdo it with the product. Smile again for me. Okay, and relax. Okay, and that is everything. How do you feel? Fantastic. Did it hurt? Nope. Good. So, um, what will happen now is that it's not an overnight miracle. It's not gonna happen in the space of two hours. Um, in the next three to five days, he'll start feeling it pulling a bit. So he'll start feeling that it's, he's struggling a bit to make his facial expressions. Elliot goes to the gym. Um, so he does actually use a lot of his facial expressions. So he might feel it a lot quicker than anyone else. But it, after about two weeks, that's when you know the full effect. That's when you know it, the Botox completely kicked in. Um, a lot of injectors do say come back for a top up, but I personally believe that if you've injected correctly and you've looked at the person's anatomy, a top up is not required. Obviously there is the odd person where it's not worked as well because the Botox hasn't taken, but nine out of 10 times you do not need a top up if you have been injected correctly and your anatomy has been looked at and you have been looked at as a whole. So that is that. The other thing that we need him to do, and I'm gonna ask him in a moment, is he will need to sit up. He will have to sit uh, sit up, well, not lie down for the next four hours. Um, I need him not to rub his eyes, I need him not to wipe his face. It's just that where I've injected here, I want this product to stay exactly here. If he rubs his eye and moves this across this border, that is when we're going to get an eye droop like that. I don't want any product here or any product here which would cause that to droop. So please, Elliot, don't rub your eyes or anything today. Uh, sit up, don't lie down for four hours. And then I also, no heavy exercise, so you can't go to the gym for 24 to 48 hours okay and also no heavy lifting and no bending down basically we're just trying to keep what i've put here in that position for the next 24 to 48 hours um also try to avoid hot showers after you've had this done and that is everything